What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this invisibility effect instead of After Effects. So to do this effect, you're going to want a video shot on a tripod or somewhere where the camera isn't moving at all. As you can see, I have a shot of this person walking here, but the camera is stationary, which is ideal for this. You can do it where the camera is moving, but what we're going to have to do is mask out this person and then generate a background so we have a clean plate of the background without the person. And it's a lot easier to do that when the camera isn't moving. But if it was, then I guess you could try doing the content aware fill, but honestly, the effect doesn't look as good doing it that way so ideally you want to do this on a tripod so if you have a shot like this then you should be able to create this effect so the first thing we want to do is go to the start of that clip and then go to composition and save frame as and then just hit file and then you can just change the output location right here and then just click render and then you can just open that up and it'll open up as a photoshop file but if you didn't have photoshop you can also do this online by using like a free ai removal tool like adobe firefly or dolly i think is another one so there's a lot of different options if you don't have photoshop but i assume if you're using after effects and you should have photoshop or something like that so i'm going to be using this lasso tool if you go up here and just select this by left clicking it you can get the polygonal lasso tool or whatever and you just want to go ahead and make a rough selection around your subject then let's go ahead and generate or fill this and that looks pretty good so once you have that we can go up to file export and then just export this out so i just brought this clean plate back into after effects it's just a jpeg image so what we can do now is bring that underneath our timeline or underneath that clip so if i toggle on the top one you can see now we just have that clean plate but now what we need to do is rotoscope out our person so we can go ahead and toggle on and off our footage but still have our subject here walking in the background so let's go up to the roto brush tool double click our layer to open up in this new panel and we can just go ahead and start selecting. And luckily, since I'm using Rotobrush 3.0, this is like insanely good. And I don't really think I need to do much correction. It stays pretty locked on the whole entire time here. Once you have a good outline around your subject and you're happy with how it looks, you can go over here and hit freeze. And this will just freeze all your Rotobrush frames. And then once that's done, we can close out of that Rotobrush composition. And now we're back in our main comp. So selecting that Rotobrush layer, we're going to actually right click this and then go to pre-compose and then move all attributes into the new composition. And just hit okay so now we have a layer that is just the rotor brush but it's not actually the rotor brush layer because if it was like that then you'd run into some issues for some reason so to get away with that we just have to pre-compose it which is totally fine but it's another step that you kind of have to do so the next thing we're going to do is add our displacement map and you can either do the displacement map that's built into after effects or you can download displacer pro i'll have that link down in the description below it's actually a free plugin and in my opinion it's actually a lot better well i, I mean it is better than the built-in one because it has a lot of other features but you can do this with just the default display instead of after effects so if you search up displacement map it is just right here so i'll just go ahead and use this since everyone has this effect and drag this onto our bottom layer but let's go ahead and change this footage and change this to our rotor brush layer so this is layer one and then go ahead and toggle off your rotor brush layer so it looks like you have nothing here but as soon as you start messing with these values you can see your subject starts to appear onto the screen you can do this for the vertical and horizontal, but if you start to move it up and you see these black edges around the rotor brush, then you can go over here and warp pixels and that should fix your issue. So already that looks super cool, but I'm just gonna show you guys what the Displacer Pro plugin does. So let's go ahead and delete that and bring on Displacer Pro and change the map layer to that rotor brush layer and then move these values. And let's just go ahead and make that edge behavior repeat again. But for this, you can also move the rotation, which is super cool. Overall, I feel like a cleaner look, especially with the anti-aliasing here. You can bring this to like two times. So everything just looks a lot smoother and the edges don't look as artificial. We also have this chromatic effect so we can adjust the red value, but it's a little finicky as you can see when you're adjusting it. Sometimes it like creates some weird effects throughout your whole entire screen. So just kind of slowly adjust this until you only get the effect applied onto your subject. Kind of interesting you might have to play around with it but besides that it's pretty cool and you can get some different effects just by adjusting these values here and here's what i set my x and y values to with that chromatic effect applied and here's what we get now super cool and pretty subtle but i really like how that looks you could even keyframe the x value or the y and just like increase the value over time which could be pretty cool and then obviously just mess with these keyframes let's go ahead and play that back see what that looks like but for this tutorial, that's not really the effect I'm going for. So I'm just going to remove this chromatic aberration and keep it pretty basic and simple and then just adjust my X and Y values here. Something like this. Now to animate on this effect, I'm going to duplicate a rotor brush layer by hitting Control D and then toggle this back on. And let's go ahead and apply a Luma key and then just start off for the threshold at zero. Go a few frames over, set this to the maximum, which is 255. 
and then do that same thing for the out. So start the keyframe at 255 and then bring it back down to zero. So now you can see we have our animated effect for that invisibility. I'm gonna take this one step further by adding some different shake and zoom ins to make it look a little bit more energetic and animated. Let's go ahead and create adjustment layer and apply an effect called a transform and then make sure the shutter angle is at 360. And we're gonna start off by having this clip zoomed in. So let's bring this to like 130 and then hit scale and then click a keyframe for the scale. We're gonna make the next keyframe for when the invisibility is fully appeared onto our subject. Bring this back up to 100 and I'm just gonna select these and easy easies by using a graph and then do that same thing for the out transition so set a keyframe for the scale and then when the visibility is done i'm going to set this back up to like 130 and then just easy ease those keyframes as well and then i'm just going to go ahead and create another adjustment layer and make sure motion blur is enabled and i'm just going to shorten this down because i don't need the full length of that and then align it so it aligns when the start of that zoom out happens and then go into the effects and search up shake. I'm just going to be using one of my shake presets here. You can go ahead and download these as well in the description. I have tons of different shakes you can choose from and they're all pretty different. So let's go ahead and try just the shake one, bring this onto the adjustment layer. And yeah, that looks super sick. I'm going to go ahead and apply one more effect. I'm just going to duplicate that adjustment layer, but I'm going to delete the shake effects. And we're going to go to another one of my presets, which is the turbulent presets here. I'll have these linked in the description below as well if you want to try these out. Um, but you can also just create your own by using the turbulent effect and keyframing it. Let's go ahead and try the turbulent for the light. We can just adjust the center of these effects. And here's what that looks like with the shake and turbulent effects applied. I think it adds a little bit more motion and energy to this effect. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate those layers and apply those for the outro, or I guess when it zooms back in, so right about here. And there you go, that's how you create this invisibility effect inside of After Effects.